Something I have heard a lot anytime a new patch of Dead by Daylight comes out is that the game is becoming more noob friendly and that the developers are catering to the casual player base instead of caring about the veterans that invested thousands of hours into the game. Some examples of these changes include the simplification of flashlight saves, a once impressive feat of skill that can now be done by your average Joe, or the removal of certain texts from killer powers that make them simpler to play and with less depth, like Chucky's flicks or the soon-to-come Hogtech removal from the Blight. Or how about the unexpected buff that the Huntress received, a character that many players agreed was strong enough, with a buff that seems catered to beginner players that miss a lot of hatchets. Think of Dead by Daylight as a line, where the left side belongs to the new players with the lower skill ceiling of the game, and the right side belongs to the veterans and absolute top of the skill ceiling. What Behavior is doing in order to make the game easier for casuals is to cut from the right side of this line by removing cool text and simplifying the gameplay aspect of Dead by Daylight, the average player has it easier to reach the right side of this line and become good. So for them, these changes are indeed great. But for the players that are on the right, these changes just remove part of the fun and depth of Dead by Daylight making the game easier to play and thus more stale. And this is my entire issue with the game and the reason I am making this video. The problem that casuals and new players have is not the fact that the Huntress is too hard to play or that the Blight is too strong and needs the hook text to be removed. The true issue that beginners and casuals face in Dead by Daylight is the severe lack of in-game tools that explain gameplay mechanics to beginners, the massive grind or paywall regarding perks that doesn't incentivize gameplay variety, and the matchmaking win condition which only makes what was once a fun game into a competitive sweat fest. Today, I will shed light into a topic that not many players even care about and show how truly bad the new player experience is for Dead by Daylight. Let's start with the biggest problem this game has, in my opinion, and that's the fact that the tools given in-game in order to learn the gameplay are very lacking. Now don't get me wrong, I am not saying that Dead by Daylight is a very hard game to understand. The core gameplay is pretty simple, as a survivor, you have to repair 5 generators with your teammates in order to power the exit gates, open them and escape the trial, all while avoiding the killer who will want to catch you, hang you on sacrificial hooks and prevent you from repairing the gens and escaping the trial. Compared to more strategic games, for example MOBAs like League of Legends or shooters that require a lot of mechanical skill like Valorant or Counter Strike, it's clear that Dead by Daylight is simpler to understand and requires less mechanics in order to be good at. This is why it makes it so enjoyable to watch streams of it, because any viewer even the newer ones will easily understand the core gameplay of Dead by Daylight. The problem, and many of you will agree, is that if you have invested a lot of hours into the game, the description I said earlier about Dead by Daylight is an oversimplification of the actual gameplay we have, and while mechanically speaking, Dead by Daylight is not as demanding compared to the vast majority of competitive games, a skill set that you absolutely need in order to perform well is to have knowledge, and in Dead by Daylight you need a lot of it. But the only way to get this knowledge is by the hard way, which is constantly losing until you learn how to play as or against a killer, something that is not fun for the majority of the player base, or by taking a look into guides from content creators or the wiki, which means you have to go outside of the game to learn it. In my opinion, a great game is that which explains everything you need to know inside of it, and you don't have to enter a website or watch content creators in order to learn the basics. Dead by Daylight only offers 3 tools in order to help new players learn the game, an in-game interactive tutorial, a game manual section that contains most gameplay elements in text format, and the character select screen. Let's break down each of them to see just how bad they are 
starting with the in-game tutorial. This survivor tutorial starts by teaching you basic controls, like walking, crouching, moving the camera and bolting, as well as the basics of repairing a generator and hitting skill checks. After that, you are shown the power of the trapper, a killer that can place bear traps around the map to catch you. Once you're picked up by the killer, Meg will drop down a pallet in order to save you, and this is where the problems begin. Once you advance enough, the game tells you to drop down a pallet for no reason before continuing with the tutorial, which just teaches new survivors to waste pallets once you see the killer instead of saving them to stun them and make chases last longer. A survivor might think that they have to pre-drop pallets in order to make the killer waste time by breaking them, but that's not true for the vast majority of cases. After wasting a pallet, you are told to save Meg and then proceed to hide inside a locker, which is problem number two, as lockers are some of the biggest noob traps in the game and this is already teaching them bad habits. I find it funny how even in the tutorial, hiding inside a locker is useless since the killer finds you either way, so why not teach survivors that there are better things to do rather than hide in a locker with your teammate after unhooking? Why not teach them to run or do generators instead? However, something I do like is that they updated the tutorial in order to include the anti-face camping mechanic so new players at least know that it exists. After getting saved by Meg and the game explaining you how to heal others, you repair a generator with Meg and open the exit gates, after which the game also teaches you the mechanic of the hatch. I think the hatch is an important mechanic to explain to new players, but I also find it interesting how the existence of the hatch might promote new players to just hide until your teammates are dead so you can get the hatch. It might be personal bias, but at the very least, I remember my solo queue games like that way back when I started playing in 2016, when you had to repair two generators in order to spawn the hatch. But going back to the tutorial, that's it. There is no mention of the different types of items that survivors can equip in the match. I am sure many of us thought that maps would literally show a map of the match so you know where generators are or the chests, which are also missing from the tutorial completely. There is zero mention of the sabotage mechanic with toolboxes and how hooks are repaired after a short time or how keys can be used to open up the hatch. I bet some players actually think that flashlights are used in order to light up the map in case it's too dark, instead of it being used as an aggressive item against the killers. Behavior could have implemented a section where you search inside a chest in order to find a flashlight that would later be used to blind the killer, so it teaches you two things, what chests are and how they work, and how to use flashlights. Instead, what the tutorial teaches you is to waste a pallet down while the killer is busy carrying your teammate. There is also no mention of the various status effects that can hinder you in a match, for example your aura being revealed, blindness, exposed, hindered, none of that. Raise your hand if you also thought that exposed meant that the killer could see you way back when you started playing. The game does teach you about the resolve mechanic, which is the anti face camp mechanic, but it doesn't teach you about endurance, the effect you get once you escape from a hook, and that getting hit while you have endurance will give you the deep wound status effect, which if you don't mend yourself, you are gonna go down, something that I bet your beginner friends probably had trouble with when they started playing. What is worse is that the game incentivizes you to heal Meg, your rescuer, as part of the healing tutorial but that will only remove the endurance status effect you get after unhooking and it's one of the biggest mistakes you can do. Anytime you are unhooked, the game should incentivize you to either leave the hook or let yourself get healed by the rescuer. What this section should have done is mention that there are conspicuous actions that will remove your endurance anytime you repair a generator or interact with any of the other survivors. There is also no mention of totems, which is something that appears in every single match in Dead by Daylight. The game doesn't mention anything about hexes, and the fact 
that there are 5 totems around the map that could potentially host Hex perks, some of the strongest perks a killer can use. There is also no mention of the boons mechanic at all, but this is an issue we will talk about in a later part of this video. However, no one escapes death is a problem for a lot of new players and it's a free perk, so the argument of hexes being too advanced is not right. How about showing in the endgame section that the trapper bot has hex, no one escapes death? This way, the survivors are shown how important some perks can be, what the exposed status effect is and how strong it is, and the survivors are thought about the existence of hex totems and how to deal with them. And possibly the worst offender is the trapper section. The game doesn't teach you at all that you can close down trappers bear traps or save your teammates from one in case they are stuck. There is zero guidance for new players in order to help them in chases, for all they know is that the bear traps are very dangerous and that you should throw down pallets outside of a chase to slow down the killers as well as hide in lockers, which is just bad. The tutorial should have teached you that you can close down the bear traps so survivors are not scared of interacting with them or even teach you that if the trapper puts a bear trap under a pallet, you can throw it down to vault it. This way, you teach the players two things. As trapper, don't put your traps under pallets and as a survivor, it already teaches you a smart counterplay against the killer that adds some depth to the gameplay. The tutorial could present you with a choice to either close the trap or to put a pallet down. I hope this breakdown shows you that the survivor tutorial is extremely lacking and fails at teaching some core aspects of the game, to the point that it actually teaches some bad things to newer players and the only true way to learn the game is by either watching guides on the internet, have a friend teach you while you play or find out the hard way once you are inside a match. If this is the first experience a new player gets when playing Dead by Daylight, no wonder it's so easy to win as a killer in low MMR. And in fact, the difference in skill from a player that just picks up the game and a player that has watched a guide or someone stream the game is so severe that it can lead to solo players being frustrated that their teammates have zero idea of what they are doing. After all, again, the tutorial teaches you to throw down a pallet randomly, so is it really your clueless teammate's fault? And if you thought that the survivor tutorial was bad, let's just take a look at the killer side now. The killer tutorial begins with the trapper, and you already see that the game is now on first person instead of the third view camera from survivors. It tells you about the basics and that you should go to generators in order to prevent survivors from repairing them, which is great. It also teaches you of loud explosions when missing skill checks and how to kick generators. We instantly find a big problem with this tutorial, and that is the fact that there is zero mention of the anti-3 generator mechanic, where kicking the same generator many times will eventually lead it to it being blocked by the entity. This is a very important mechanic that any killer player will find during their matches and it can be very confusing for someone that has no idea about it. Next up, you are thought about the mechanics of scratch marks, fast bold noises, as well as a small chase with Meg. It teaches you that if you get hit by a pallet, you will get stunned. However, the way it presents it to you suggests that it's better to stay at the pallet and try to stun the killer rather than loop the killer around the pallet to make them waste more time. After that, they tell you to place down a bear trap, but they do it in some of the most basic ways I have ever seen. There is no mention of picking up your bear traps around the map, or how to reset bear traps that are disarmed, and no mention of the fact that if you get caught by a bear trap yourself, you will get stunned and if you carry a survivor, they will escape. To play Devil's Advocate, one can argue that this is the killer's tutorial and not a trapper specific one, so let's just ignore this for now. After that, the game teaches you how to injure survivors with basic attacks, the downside of being injured and how to pick up a survivor to hook them. Despite the bot not wiggling, the game does make it clear that you need to be quick and hook them 
or else they can escape your grasp. However, the game doesn't teach you that you can also drop survivors down in case there are no hooks around and that each time you drop them, there is some progress added to the wiggle bar. Once you hook Meg, the game reminds you again that if you stay close to a hook survivor, they can escape the hook. Then, the game teaches you to close the hatch and the tutorial ends with Jake being trapped by the bear trap you set earlier, so you hook them. But, have you noticed something? The tutorial is over, yet there was no mention of breakable walls, a mechanic that as of now only killers can interact with. What is weirder is that even in the survivor tutorial you can see the bot trapper breaking down a wall in order to catch you, which I find to be a very cool detail. There is also no mention of the basement, which is weird, because I remember in a past tutorial the game actually talked about how dangerous it can be. Something I heavily dislike about both the tutorials is that they do not mention how long each hook stage lasts, which is super important to know as a survivor as it will let you know how long you have in order to save your friends. Both of the bots instantly die the moment they are hooked and I understand not wanting to wait for the full duration, but at least explain it or mention it somewhere. There is no explanation of the different items survivors can use against you, like flashlights or toolboxes. There is no mention of the endurance status effect that survivors get after you hit them after unhooking, which can confuse some new players as to why a survivor didn't go down when injured. No mention of how those pesky survivors can disarm your bear traps, so you should place them in smarter ways. It's a very lacking tutorial for a very brutal, competitive game where each bit of information is crucial in order to survive or sacrifice. However, there is still one saving grace for the tutorial of the game, and that is the game manual. I am more of a show, don't tell kinda guy, but either way, let's just see how effective the game manual is. The game manual is a section of the game that I am sure not many players even know it exists. Instead of selecting the tutorials, you go to the top part to find it. It is divided into three categories, the game, the survivors and the killers, and I won't be analyzing it too much just for the sake of brevity. However, what I will point out is that this game manual is very lacking too. While it does a good job at explaining some of the things that are not explained in the tutorial, this is still just too much text without any examples provided for new players. I think instead of this tutorial just being text, a certain animation or GIF or even an image should be shown in order to make it more helpful for newer players, like show the aura of a survivor behind a wall, show how a scorch hook looks like or show the obsession icon on the hood. But even then, the game manual lacks some absolutely crucial information that new players need to know, and there is no excuse as to why these things are missing from the manual. For example, let's talk about the anti-face camping mechanic, which was explained in the tutorial. If you want to read about it to find out, for example, how big the radius is or how long it takes to fully fill, you can't, because the only mention of this mechanic is done in the in-game section of the manual and not the hook sections of each respective role. I also want to point out that at no point in the entire manual or tutorial does it explain that the anti-face camp mechanic does not work in the end game, so a killer might not know that you actually can and should protect your hook in the end game to at least get a sacrifice. The tutorial doesn't even talk about items and what they do. There is no section that quickly goes over each item, unlike with the status effects. Again, just like with the in-game tutorial, there is zero mention of the anti-3gen mechanic, so unless you watch Odzdarva, visit the wiki or get told by a friend, you won't know what the orange spikes are when you break a generator. In the stealth avoid getting detected section, the manual tries to mention all the ways a killer can find you when you're trying to hide, but there is no mention of the killer instinct mechanic at all. In fact, killer instinct is not mentioned in the killer section either, and this is super important for survivors to know, especially the newer ones, 
as Killer Instinct is the only tracking mechanic that bypasses lockers. Imagine the frustration of a survivor that hides in a locker only for the artist, the xenomorph or the legion to find them instantly. And the game doesn't tell you about the fact that dropping a survivor will add some wiggle progress the next time you pick them up. And by the way, remember my gripe with the hook stages I mentioned in the tutorial? How the game doesn't tell you how long each hook stage lasts? Yeah, that is also omitted from the game manual. And by the way, nowhere in this manual does it state that grades have nothing to do with the matchmaking system. A new player might think that the better the grade, the better the players will be, but grades are completely independent of the matchmaking system, so this just causes confusion to new players. The fun part is that this is also not explained in the grade section of the game, where I think a disclaimer explaining that grades have nothing to do with matchmaking would be great and very helpful. And what I find weird is that Behavior is great at explaining mechanics of their game outside of the game itself. On their official YouTube channel, as well as TikTok, Behavior has done a series of shorts that explain the new mechanics for new players, and they are done in a very to-the-point and intuitive manner. Generators can now receive up to 8 regression events, and once those events have been reached, the generator will become blocked and can no longer be damaged. These videos are fantastic, which makes me wonder why the game is so poorly explained compared to what they do in their official channel. So, if the tutorials and game manual are bad, how about the last resource players have in order to learn the game, the tooltips in the lobby? If you hover your cursor over a perk, add-on, offering or power, you will get a description of what those things do. Overall, I don't have much problems with this and I think the developers have done a pretty good job so far. For example, if you hover over a perk that gives you the haste status effect, it will explain to you what haste is. Add-ons also have this explanation. So, if both perks and add-ons have this, why don't the killer powers do too? And this is where my biggest problems with Dead by Daylight are. The killer powers are not explained in an intuitive and easy access way for beginners. Dead by Daylight is a player versus player competitive game where you as a survivor have to play against the killers in order to win and there are various killer powers that are completely unintuitive for new players to learn, which most of these times results in beginner survivors to get absolutely demolished in low ranks. There are only two ways the game offers you as a new player in order to learn about what a killer has as their power. The first one is if you manually go to each killer in order to read what their power is. If you don't have that killer unlocked, you will have to go to the store section of the game in order to see their power tooltip. The other way is that for the first times you play against a new killer during the loading screen, a tooltip will appear that will tell you how the powers work, but this doesn't happen all the time. Xenomorph's power is too complex to show in a single tooltip, so getting one that says the Xenomorph can tunnel around the map through vents is not useful since you as a survivor don't know that there are flamethrowers you can use to get Xenomorph out of a special state called Crawler Mode where it can attack you with its tail that can bypass low walls and pallets. If you don't know this and the killer is not bad, then you have no chance of surviving. Instead, you have to manually go over a killer power to see what it is. So let's take a look at Xenomorph as a random example. The first section of the power explains that Xenomorph can enter tunnels in order to go around the map faster, detect nearby survivors and also charge crawler mode faster. Notice how it only says that you can detect nearby survivors but not how. It doesn't explain that you can see survivor footsteps when they are running and that if they walk, you no longer detect them. I had no idea this is how it worked way back when the PTB of this killer was first released. It also explains how leaving the tunnels will deactivate the turrets momentarily, which is something that 90% of the player base still doesn't know since they place their turrets near the tunnel entrances. 
That's crucial information you need to know as a survivor in order to counter Xenomorph. Again, it talks about Killer Instinct, but it doesn't mention what it is. It later talks about Crawler Mode, but all it says is that you get access to a Brutal Tail Attack. It doesn't explain how it works, what the difference is between a basic attack and a tail attack, nor why you should care about it. Killer powers are crucial information that you need to know as a survivor. You might not need to learn every single add-on or every single perk, but I believe that every survivor needs to know how each of the killer powers work, because you as a player have no choice as to which killer you are going against, and your knowledge is also crucial in order to help your three teammates escape and have better odds against the killer, and the way the killer powers are explained in the game is not great. Take a look at League of Legends and how each champion's passive and powers are explained as well as visually shown so players understand how their kit works. And then we have Dead by Daylight's wall of text that doesn't even explain in depth how a killer power works. These texts are okay for killers like the Huntress, who have a simple power, but with killers that are more complex, this wall of text is not enough. An example of this is the Knight a character that can summon three helpers to track and chase survivors. It mentions their name as well as what they do, but it doesn't tell you how long a hunt lasts with each of the guards, or the fact that the longer your guard summon is, they will detect survivors faster as well as the game will give you a bit of haste to move around the map faster. This haste is not even mentioned in the Trapper's Killer Power. The game fails to explain how after every trap you set, the trapper will temporarily move faster. And let's be completely honest with yourselves, how many of you can explain the power of the school merchant? The worst offenders for me are the killer powers that don't even explain every single aspect of a killer power. I actually learned through my YouTube comments that Wesker's virulent bound cooldown is faster the more survivors are infected with the Ouroboros, and only recently I learned that Trickster has an entire combo mechanic that makes the main event last longer the better your combo is. And did you know that Singularity's overclock also lasts longer the more survivors are slipstreamed? Yes, I had to test that out myself against bots in a custom match because it's not told anywhere, not even in the power, not in any of the add-ons either. And since we are on the topic of add-ons, Let's talk about an actual problem that many new players will have trouble with. If you are a survivor that just got hit by a hillbilly that could bypass the pallet with a chainsaw, you might be wondering how he did that. Was that a cheat? Well, the answer is that it was a very rare add-on that dramatically changes a fundamental part of his power. Lucky for you, you can check out all the add-ons for hillbilly in the costume match screen since all add-ons are unlocked from the start. Unless you got Wesker purchased, you are out of luck, because you can't access and view the add-ons of a killer that you did not purchase or grind for, so even at worst, a new player is not able to learn what the add-ons do for a killer they don't have unlocked. Well, I lied. There is a way to see the add-ons for killers you don't own. All you have to do is wait until the match is completely over in order to see what add-ons the killer was running in your match. You don't want to wait until the match is over, well, you're out of luck. The same issue can be applied to perks. Since the loadout of the killer is not revealed up until the match is over, if you are a new player that are hit with a niche perk that you had no idea about, like let's say Unforeseen, the newest perk of the unknown which can be confusing for new players, then the only way you will find out and learn about this perk is either if you wait until the match is over so you can see what perk the killer is using or go and ask one of your friends about it because I doubt you will have much luck finding about it in the Dead by Daylight wiki if you can't even describe the effects yourself. Now obviously, the hidden perks mechanic was introduced in order to counter survive with friends helping each other by telling them the perks the killer was running. But in a funny way, this was just a nerf to new players that might want to learn about the perks and add-ons of the killer they played against. I think the absolute 
perfect solution would be to have a glossary that visually shows how each perk and add-on works like a comparison of how fast a pallet is broken with brutal strength compared to default, a video showcasing that Hillbilly's chainsaw will continue after breaking a pallet with low pro chains, how Nemesis zombie speed increases with each add-on, these are just examples, but a glossary system that showcases every single perk and add-on even if you don't have the killer unlocked would help new players in an insane way. It just doesn't make sense that a competitive player versus player game hides information about the in-game mechanics and you have to enter the Dead by Daylight wiki in order to find out about basic stuff. This is the only competitive game that I have played where I have to enter the wiki in order to learn about how certain mechanics work, which is ridiculous in my opinion. I never had to touch the wiki for Rainbow Six Siege or League or Valorant. I find it odd that Dead by Daylight is also one of the only games where the backstory of a character takes more importance than their killer power and statistics. Take a look at how massive the wall of backstory of any character except some licensed ones is compared to how small the killer tooltip is. Even in the cosmetic store, the side where players who didn't unlock the killers will have access to, the lore is massive whereas the killer power is hidden and you have to manually search for it. Imagine if in Valorant, instead of the game explaining to you what Omen does, you get a massive wall of text explaining his backstory and you have to manually search for his powers in order to see that he can smoke and blind the enemies. And I believe I know the reason as to why this game is so poorly explained, and that's because the devs actually want it that way. Dead by Daylight is marketed as a horror game after all, so the mystery and suspense of not knowing who you are going against and what their power is actually fits perfectly with a horror game. Many gamers can agree that knowing how a killer works takes away from the scare factor of facing them. The issue is that the time of DVD being a horror game is long gone, and it is now a competitive game, so there is no point in hiding information to the players when you can just search it on the internet or view guides on YouTube and Twitch, or what many of you have experienced, be told by how the killer power works by your friends who already have hours and hours invested. I think it's pretty clear by now that Dead by Daylight is one of the least intuitive competitive video games in the market. If you think that this entire half an hour was just me ranting about a useless topic in the game and that the solution is to just shut up and watch content creators for 50 hours or get a friend to explain the game to you, then take a look at the kill rates the devs have shown us on December of 2023. You can clearly see that the killers with the highest kill rate are those that have convoluted powers that a new player will find extremely hard to play against, and anyone seeing these stats know that the kill rates mean nothing on how strong a killer is. Where is the blight? Where is the nurse? This is a problem that the game suffers from, which is why I put so much importance regarding this first point. All I am saying is that if this game had a good tutorial and explanation for beginners, the $350,000 tournament fiasco wouldn't have happened. In my personal opinion, a game that requires you to watch Otsdarva seminars in order to have a chance at winning and understanding what is going on cannot be called a casual game. But this is just one of the issues that new players face when they start playing Dead by Daylight. Let's talk about the grind. If you thought that the in-game tutorials of Dead by Daylight are bad, then we haven't even scratched the top of the iceberg yet. One of the reasons as to why so many players drop Dead by Daylight during the first month they play is thanks to the abhorrent and absurdly insane grind that you are forced to endure if you want to have any chance at having any fun in Dead by Daylight, especially if you're playing by yourself. When you start playing Dead by Daylight, you have 7 survivors and 5 killers to play with if you bought the game on PC. If you play on console, you also get Feng Min, The Doctor, Ace Visconti and The Hag. Switch players also get Kate, The Clown, Adam and Spirit, but for the sake of this video, we are going to ignore Switch players entirely. 
and since the vast majority of casual players are found in the console versions of the game, we will count the 4 extra characters as part of base kit, just to make this video consistent. So, a beginner will have 9 survivors and 7 killers to play with. So already, from the start, the survivor side, 82% of the content is locked, out of which 36% is locked behind a paywall. For killers, 85% of the content is locked, out of which 37% is locked behind a paywall. Now, lucky for us, Behavior has done an insane change that benefits new players dramatically, as now, all the old content costs half of the original price. This means that the grind is effectively cut in half. If you remember my monetization video, where I talked for 50 minutes over how unfair the monetization and grind of the game was, I said that it would take 735 hours of pure gameplay in order to unlock all unlicensed characters in Dead by Daylight. Since then, the grind now takes 368 hours in order to unlock all of the characters mentioned in that video, and 210 hours in order to unlock the unlicensed characters released in 2023 as of the release of this video. Remember that this is only for the unlicensed characters. But I don't want to bore you with math, as my old video is enough. Instead, let's focus on beginners and how stupid the perk system is for this game. Dead by Daylight's perk system was designed in order to give some variety to the matches. Originally, the game was released with 12 teachable survivor perks, 3 for each survivor and 14 general perks that are unlocked by default. For the killer side, killers had 9 teachable perks and 11 general perks. Nowadays, Dead by Daylight has 231 teachable perks and can you guess how many general perks have been added since then? Two. Only two general perks. Those being the perks Thrill of the Hunt and Shattered Hope, both for killers. So the absurdly vast majority of the perks in this game are locked behind a grind of either 17 hours if they are old characters, 35 hours if they are new characters, locked behind a paywall if they are licensed, or locked behind an archaic system called the Scam of Secrets, which completely pisses me off that nobody is talking about how truly bad this system is, not to mention the general perks we have in the game for the most part are absolute trash, so if you are new to the game, you are basically forced to grind for good characters in order to make a great build. The issue with the perk system is that it affects both sides in a different way. For survivors, since everyone is just a skin, you can just grind for one build and run it with whoever you want for the rest of your gameplay hours. The free survivors you get in the beginning also come with great perks, like Feng Min's Life perk, Deja Vu, Kindred or Meg's Adrenaline perk. That's a solid build that you can make almost at the start of the game. For survivors, the only issue is that in order to get teachable perks, you have to prestige either Meg or Feng Min, and in order to do so, you have to earn blood points, which is painfully slow at the beginning because you don't have any double blood point offerings and you rely on either playing during an event like the Blood Moon or Anniversary or rely on your friends stacking blood point offerings just to make things easier for new players. What makes it worse is that if you don't have any friends to do that, there is a high chance you will end up dying in your first matches, and survivor's blood point gain is miserable if you die really quick, not to mention the amount of absolutely useless items, offerings and add-ons that you will be forced to purchase in order to continue leveling up your character. More than 80% of the unlockables and offerings for survivor are trash, so this just leads to a boring, unfun and unrewarding experience for all players. What makes this perk system of teachables even more unfun is that it completely sets some perks to fail from the start. If any of the new perks are designed with new players in mind, then no one is going to use them besides the adept, because by the time a new player already unlocks those perks, they will have significantly better options in their loadout. As such, perks like Visionary from Felix, Corrective Action from Jonah, Rookie Spirit from Leon, or the newest boom perk, Illumination from Alan Wake, they all suck, 
since the players that would benefit from them the most, new players, won't need those perks by the time they unlock or pay for those characters. Then we have weak dump perks that again nobody will use because they are just worse than the perks new players have. Using Alan Wake, the newest licensed survivor as an example, he has Deadline, which is just a bad perk, so outside from an adept, no new survivor is going to want to get or grind for this perk. But the problem is that if behavior makes good perks, then we go back to the issue that newer players are at a huge disadvantage, which is very problematic when band-aid solutions are only offered to licensed perks. Decisive Strike is one of the best anti-tunnel perks in the game, along with Off the Record, but Decisive is a licensed perk, so you either pay for Lori Strode or you wait for it in the scam of secrets. The same can be said about Reassurance, a fantastic perk that helps quite a lot with one of the problems newer survivors suffer from, proxy camping. Yet again, this perk is locked behind a paywall or the scam of secrets. This is also elevated by the skill-based matchmaking introduced in Dead by Daylight. One of the most common tactics killer players do at the start of the match is to tunnel out the weak link from the match to make the game a 3 vs 1. And if you played with a new friend before, you would know how bad the experience is when you play well and the killer completely ignores you in order to go for your inexperienced friend. The problem is that the perks that will help you in this situation are off the record, which is locked behind a paywall, or decisive strike, which again is behind a licensed paywall. All the perks that help with tunneling are not accessible for newer players. So in the end, we reach the conclusion that Dead by Daylight's teachable perk is a complete lose-lose situation regarding new players. Either the perks are designed for new players in mind, but only veterans or invested players can get access without paying, or the perks are very strong, but they are locked behind a long grind and even paywall, rendering new players at a disadvantage. For killers, this is a completely different beast to tackle, and I have already talked about it in my monetization video. Since killers are all different, that means that some perks will naturally synergize with some killers more than the rest. If you want to experiment and have fun, you are forced to grind for it or buy them. Just take a look at the most searched terms for Dead by Daylight and you will see that one of the most asked questions in YouTube is which killer should I buy first? Now compare these two operators in Rainbow and agents in Valorant and take a look at how only in Dead by Daylight the word first is specified significantly more than on the two other games. This is because already by default, if you want to have any chance at the higher MMR, which I doubt a player that doesn't pay can even reach, you must buy various killers, as you can't only main one of them. Plague has Corrupt Intervention, Cenobite has Deadlock, Nemesis has Lethal Pursuer, Cenomorph has Ultimate Weapon, Chucky has Friends Till the End. Those are only one of the three teachable perks that each killer has, and everything is locked behind a 35 hours or 17 hours grind, depending on how old the killers are, or behind a paywall if they are licensed. And that's brutal for new players. What is worse is that, objectively speaking, the best perks for killers are locked behind a paywall. According to Odsdarva's perk tier list, which I will just use to show an example since it's pretty accurate, 6 of the best perks in the game are locked behind a licensed paywall, and 9 of them are locked behind grinds for separate killers. The only good perks you can get from the start are No One Escapes Death and Sloppy Butcher, both of which do not work with certain characters that have special attacks. And this is where the huge problem with perks comes from. Dead by Daylight is not the only game that has entire characters locked behind a paywall. Fighter games like Guilty Gear or Super Smash Bros also have characters locked behind paywalls, but those characters exist in a vacuum, so if you didn't pay for Testament in Guilty Gear, you only miss out on them. Whereas in Dead by Daylight, if you don't have access to the Xenomorph, you cannot get Ultimate Weapon, which is one of the best, if not the best tracking perk, even post its nerf. I think the biggest outlier and best proof that the perk system implemented in Dead by Daylight doesn't care about new players at all is the general perk introduced with the dredge called Shattered Hope. 
This perk, which all beginners will unlock at the start, only affects Boon Totems, a mechanic that is locked behind a grind or behind a paywall since no free survivor comes with a Boon perk. This means that beginner killer players get to unlock a perk that only works with DLC content, which makes absolutely no sense. Why not make a general boon perk for new survivors? I think Alan Wake's boon is great for beginners, since it's trash for anyone that has played enough. Killers need good perks in order to compete against the best caliber of survivors. Anyone who thinks you don't has never played against strong survivors that know what they are doing and run the absolute best. You can win of course, but you would have to compensate for the lack of perks with an insane amount of skill and you won't be winning all your matches. The same is applied for survivors, you need good perks in order to play against the best killers. Survive with friends that have access to the perk for the people and buckle up, the latter being a paid perk by the way, have a competitive advantage over a team who doesn't and it's that simple. With the way the aggressive MMR system is implemented, if you don't have good builds, you will eventually reach a peak where you constantly get demolished by players that simply have access to better perks than you do. So good luck competing against Pain Resonance, Pop Goes the Weasel, Corrupt Intervention and No Way Out with your Sloppy Butcher, Brutal Strength, Deer Stalker and Spice from the Shallows build. The Dead by Daylight perk system is outdated and a unique problem that only affects this game. Since I don't know of any other competitive experience that requires you to unlock paywall characters first in order to make your free characters better. And the worst part is that nobody talks about how horrible this system is because it doesn't matter for most of us. After all, the majority of players that enjoy my content or that play Dead by Daylight are veterans. Players who either already have everything they wanted and don't care about new perks or players that simply pay for the DLCs on day one. If you have paid for the DLCs each time they come out, you won't mind paying $5 to get Chucky. But if you just started playing now and you saw that you have to spend at least $200 in order to get all the content, then I bet you won't like that as a player. The worst insult is that Behavior just recently updated the cosmetic store, which included a visual overhaul of the scam of secrets. Now it does look prettier, that's true, but no matter how much glitter you put on shit, it's still shit. After almost 8 years of being live, the scam of secrets still is the same exact trash system as how it was way back in the beginning in 2016, which is baffling for me. By this point, the Scam of Secrets should straight up be a perk select store, where you can purchase any perk you want at any point in time. And I see no argument as to why this shouldn't be the case. All perks are unlocked for free in custom matches, so why do new players and beginners have to wait for a 2% each week in order to get whatever perk they want? I'll tell you why. It's just another way of FOMO. If the Scam of Secrets had a rework, it would considerably help with new players and casuals overall and it would single-handedly be by far the best change that would help the casual side of the game. No more boring grinding just for one meta perk that could be nerfed in the next patch. No more paying for content only because the perk you want didn't release for months in the scam of secrets. All perks should be available at all times period. And paywalling perks, which are gameplay altering features, is by all means a pay to win practice and nobody in this community can change my mind on this. So the overall conclusion from this video is that Dead by Daylight's tutorial is terrible and teaches new players bad habits that are detrimental to their experience, the game manual lacks crucial information that can only be found by third party means or the hard way, the perk system in Dead by Daylight is not well designed for new players and it makes the vast majority of perks doomed from the start. And the game features pay to win elements, as players that pay get a competitive advantage over players that do not pay. I hope this video was enough to show you just how bad the experience for new players is and can be if they don't have any friends to help them with. After all, I don't consider Dead by Daylight to be a casual game. 
as I cannot imagine a father of two daughters coming back home from work and booting up a casual match of Survivor and actually enjoying it because the amount of knowledge and investment you need in order to play this game is so high that even 250 hours invested is still considered beginner level by experts. You can finish Elden Ring or The Witcher in less than the amount of time it would take you to become a beginner in this game. That's just crazy for me. Please let me know about your experiences as a new player in the comment section below. There might be some problems that I completely missed in this video or things that I might have been wrong about. I think it's important that this topic becomes popular in the Dead by Daylight community since new players are indeed needed for the growth of DBD. And by the looks of it, the game only grows because the devs keep adding new licenses to attract new players, when I personally think that the core game should be good enough to attract new players without the honeypot of licensed content. Anyways, thank you for watching and have a nice day!